Well, all right. It's Thursday, May 9th, and I'm here to wrap up my day. Uh, 3-0 today. It was a good day. Um, got the uh, the opening New York Open orb trade today, and uh, that was a nice win. Um, had to set it up a little bit different than I've been doing it lately. I did some playback last night, uh, some back testing, did 39 days, um, and I was uh, 37 wins and two losses in my back testing, and kind of sorted something out, um, figured out um, a way that I'm going to approach the trade a little bit differently moving forward in certain uh, circumstances. Uh, the way the opening trade has been lately, it's just been a little bit more tricky. And uh, for anyone that watched me yesterday, you saw me blow up four accounts, two PAs and two evaluations. So that was, uh, you know, that was a bummer. Um, but, it, you know, I literally got uh, bottom ticked into the trade and it went against me. And, um, you know, it, it sucks when that happens, but it's always a possibility. And, uh, you know, one tick have made all the difference. I was 3-0 and today, uh, yesterday. If I had one more tick of room on the bottom there, I would have been 4-0 and yesterday. And uh, I'd be 9-0 and for the week. But instead, I'm 8-1 and and I blew up four accounts instead of having all those accounts active and healthy today. So, um, yeah, that was a, a tough one to handle yesterday. But the orb does work again today. And then uh, I, I continued on with my day, uh, just scalping the one minute chart. Uh, for those of you that follow me, you know that I usually uh, trade off tick charts and I look for uh, tick charts where every second entry uh, continuously and consistent consistently works for my profit target. And then I trade that those charts. Uh, today, I just didn't have charts available. I had one um, but I just, you know, the way the day started, the way the charts looked, I just didn't trust the trade off of it. And I, I want to continue working on scalping the one minute chart. I, I actually enjoyed it today. I, I took three trades, but only two of them count. Cause, uh, this first one I took actually, uh, I messed up on the copier, the trade copier and, uh, didn't change the leader account from, um, the, the opening trade. So unfortunately this one only got entered in on a SIM trade. Otherwise I would have been four and oh today. Uh, but anyway, I didn't count that. Doesn't count in the stats because it's not not on an Apex account. I don't count my sim trades. I don't even mean to sim trade. Um, so that was just an accident. Uh, so it took two more. Those were wins. And uh, yeah, um, overall sixteen and two on the app orb. Uh, eighty nine percent three and zero today and eight and one for the week. So all things are looking good. It was just a really ugly day. Um, that I got bottom ticked on that orb trade yesterday and blew up all those accounts. Uh, just a real bummer. But I'm still in the game. Still have um, these two uh, PAs in the game. And, uh, you know, this is the third day traded on it. Made $106 off the open trade. And then I also traded account 29. Uh, two contracts made $207. And uh, I'm going to be um, one basically one trade away, one open trade away tomorrow from passing that account. If, if that goes well. And uh, I'm only going to trade two contracts. So I'm actually going to come up a couple dollars shy of passing. I'll have to uh, trade out on the one minute and try to make a few bucks um, just to get that over the finish line. So uh, yeah, all in all, uh, a good day. And then I followed up with um, two trades scalping on evaluation 37, third day traded, made $157. So the balance there now 50687 just going to take it slow and steady and trade trade within my my trading. So uh, let me take all this stuff off the screen and get into the opening trade and, and the other scalps I took today. All right, so here we go. So this is, um, you know, the session since the open on the one minute chart. And let's get the orb, the New York open trade set up here. So uh, basically, if you imagine um, taking this away for a second. This is kind of how I was looking at it originally is I saw a tight range leading up to the open. And uh, of course, you know, this is what the market's been doing lately is right going into the open, it starts to run it in one direction or the other. And so I had the previous day close here, um, running, you know, right into the open. And, you know, there's a, a part of me that wanted to like, put the entry like right here for the long and, and treat it like a failed breakout of the small range and try to trade it to get back to the top of this. The, the reason why I don't want to do that is, you know, who's to say that this won't trigger, go up a little bit, bounce like sh just shy of, of what was support down, it could be resistance and then go and go down the way it was. So obviously if I, had, if I had traded it short, uh, tight for a long, this would have worked immediately. Um, but, Honestly, I, like 
I think it worked today, but you might try that another day and this thing might just take you out immediately and you know, you, you have a loss before you know it. So um, I didn't want to do that. And then, you know, considering any other lungs, I didn't want to be kind of above the, this tight yellow range. And I didn't, I don't want to be near this so much. And then if I'm getting up here, I'm too close to the top. So I put my lung all the way up here. Played it really wide. <clears throat> On the bottom side, I was looking at basically this wick at these wicks. And I wanted to be below this level if I was going to take the opening trade um, on the on the short side, and uh, so you can see this no, the open of the market happened here, and all these candles happened, and I didn't get entered until six thirty seven, uh, right here six thirty seven in the morning. Um, I wanted to be well wide of the bottom of this perceived green uh, range, and so it finally tricked uh, triggered me in, and uh, it worked immediately, really fast. And uh, that, that was the trade. I got 22 ticks on PA9 and, and evaluation 29. And this is, you know, like I said, I, I did a bunch of uh, playback, back testing last night. I did 39 days last night alone. Um, previously, I did September through December of 2023, um, tested all that. Then I went back to the beginning of 2023 and I had, I had already back tested all of January through May beginning of May. So last night I started at the beginning of May and did all of May and June basically. And uh, that was 39 days. I lost two times. I only lost one time trading wide like this from a larger kind of perceived range um, where uh, my entry ended up being a bottom tick and it went the other way and I lost. Uh, the other loser I had was trading it tight um, where I got bottom ticked trading trading, you know, kind of like the, the bottom of like this level trading here, let's say, and then it bottom ticked me and then flew up and took me out of the trade. And what I've noticed for me, for my own personal trading, now that I've, I've traded, um, in back testing and on apex, the opening trade over 150 times at this point, what I've noticed for me is that the bulk of my losers, like 90, over 90% 90 of my losers are when I'm just putting my, my orders too tight. Um, too tight to a tight range, too tight to a wide range. And so um, uh, I'm just finding that, you know, like last night, I would have only had one loss out of 39 trades if I had, uh, uh, and the, the loss on the tight order uh, that I put in was one of the, the first ones I did last night. And I, cause I wanted to test it for a situation kind of similar to this, where there was a tighter range and a wider range. And so I, I put my order um, kind of tight for the tighter range and it, it stopped me out. And, uh, um, I'm just finding when I, when I'm treating it, if there's a range within a range, I'm going to go with the wider range, even if it takes longer for it to trigger. I had this perception that I had to be in the trade, like in the first couple bars for the open or else it's not the New York open anymore. And, um, the trade, you know, then I shouldn't take the trade. And that's why I skipped some trades recently, but I'm finding that Usually, if it goes this far out of the wider range, then it, it tends to work. You know, I'm only going for 22 ticks, so I find it tends to work. So that, that's how I'm treating it. You know, I've, I've been referring to it as the Alp Orb, um, obviously in deference to, to Alpine, who is where I kind of learned about the trade. And, and I, you know, the, the Orb has existed otherwise, but he was my introduction to it. And seeing him have a success and trying to emulate what he was doing, but, um, you know, he's been having some, some, uh, tough times with it lately. Even today he got, he got ticked in for a long around here somewhere. I think he had some technical problems, but he did get ticked in and then the trade went against him. He lost half of his apex accounts, but then, uh, the market came back and he was able to get out of the rest of the accounts. Um, hate to see it happen to him, but, um, I'm just finding, you know, I, I think maybe the probability is a little bit higher when you have a trend, a, a range within a range, um, you know, maybe, maybe go with the wider one. I don't know. I'm going to test that out and see. Um, so maybe it, this is going to evolve and not necessarily be the up orb anymore. Cause it's not going to be the way he's doing it. Um, but I'm going to find what works for me and make it my own, you know, and if I can, um, you know, make this 89% win rate be in the mid to high nineties overall, uh, then that's all that matters to me. If I can, um, get consistent wins and, and, um, start to get some payouts finally and pass evaluations and, and really start to make it happen. Then I'm going to do it the way it works for me. So I'm really excited about the potential of it. 
again, um, for me, all data is showing me it's at least a 95% winning trade. Um, even though I'm a little bit below right now, it's just because it's a small data set to this point and uh, collected uh, two losses early on. But the other thing I want to mention is out of 39 trades on backtesting last night, um, I got my loss pretty early on within the first few trades. And then I went on a, uh, I believe it was a 28, I think I said in my live stream, I think it was a 28 win streak before the next loss. And so, you know, if you're able to get 28 win streaks, you're going to get payouts, you're going to get you're going to pass evaluations before you blow up the accounts. And so I think that's that's what has been happening for Alpine. And, um, you know, I've had other streaks as well in all my back testing. And, um, you know, I had a 12 0 streak here on the Apex when I started trading this trade um, uh, on the Apex accounts. So I was 12 0 to start. And so I'm only um, four and, or yeah, four and two since my 12 0 start. Um, so I could easily go on another 12 0 run. Um, I've had a 17 win streak. I've had a, a 30 win streak. You know, so there's, I think I had another 20 something win streak in the collection of all the trades I've done. So, um, you know, that's what it's all about is, you know, high win rate, it's high risk. Um, but the high reward is in the fact that you can go on these streaks and win and win and win and um, really propel your accounts. So I had a, a little bit of a, a rough start where I was one trade away at 12 and 0, one trade away from passing an evaluation just on the opening trade, 13th trade blew up that account. And then um, I was doing pretty well with those two PAs that I had. Um, and uh, and then, you know, got another blow up on another loser. And uh, that's going to happen. But I'm, I'm just going to keep looking for ways to evolve it for myself, modify it for what seems to work for me. And if I can find consistency and um, hopefully lead to payouts. And that's what it's all about. Right. So that was uh, my first trade of the day. And let's move on to the second one. All right. Here we go. Um, let's see here. So, uh, here's, here's the open trade and, uh, you can see it went way down here. And so what I was looking at was I basically found what I perceived as a huge, big range. And, um, uh, when it went all the way to the bottom, it made one leg up. I was expecting a second leg up. It did that. And then it, um, broke out of the top side of what I was perceiving as a big range there. And so my first um, trade, um, I did another measured move. So basically one leg, two legs up to the top of that big, uh, whatever you want to call this, peach range. And um, and then it looked like to me, okay, well, we're going to do a third leg, which had two legs in that. So I was expecting, um, I was expecting a second leg here. I, I kind of was thinking about taking it along here. Um, I forget why it didn't. I just wasn't sure, I guess, or wasn't totally sure if it was going to be just a failed breakout at that point, but it did use the, the top, what used to be resistance became support and it went higher. And so I, I was just being patient trading on the one minute chart and I'm not used to the one minute chart yet. So I just wanted to make sure I, I take good trades and uh, I liked this. Um, you know, we had already made um, a new high off of all that. And then we made another new high and we had reached the measured move again, basically to the tick. And I looked at it like, okay, well, that's the end of the third leg. And usually, um, after a third leg, after two big legs up, um, that might be the, the start of a change of a pattern. And, uh, I also looked at it like I was looking at this yellow range on top, the smaller one. And I saw a first entry and a second entry, uh, coincide with what looked like a failed breakout of this range as well. And so, um, I, uh, I entered using, um, uh, sell the ask and got in the trade. It, it started going against me at first. Um, originally I had my take profit kind of like right here at the midline or coincided with the EMA. And, uh, and then while I was in the trade, I realized, oh no, I'm only in SIM. Um, I saw it, I saw it up here. It was only in SIM. I was like, what happened? I wasn't really sure why I was only in SIM. And then I took a look at my, uh, uh, Replicanto trade copier and realized, oh, I never trade the leader account um, to make it a sim leader. It was still um, on the setting for the leader from the open trade, which was a uh, the Apex account was a leader on this trade. So unfortunately, um, the chart was set for sim and the the uh, copy trader was set for 
you know, my Apex account. And so it didn't copy to my, my evaluation that I wanted to. Um, and so um, it started going against me. I was thinking, okay, maybe this was a bad trade. Maybe um, I was too eager to take a, a failed breakout and it was finding support again, like it did down here. And maybe it was going to keep going higher. Um, but then it turned and went in my favor. And then I just played it safe. Um, I had moved my profit target to be coincide with um, the bottom of these candles down here. And then um, I saw some some resistance and it was kind of pushing up a little bit. So I just took out my profit uh, right there, made $140 on that on one contract. Unfortunately, it was only on SIM, so it doesn't count. And uh, because it was only on SIM, I did not count it on these uh, stats. These stats only record my uh, Apex trades. So uh, that trade was not counted. And then um, I had this huge move down. Uh, so he was like, okay, so made a nice trade. It was the beginning of a really big move. And so I felt good about that. And then here I had a first entry, second entry short above the EMA. And um, uh, I was thinking, okay, if this fails and goes above, um, you know, I was still thinking it was going to test kind of this high here, um, which was the, the peach channel. And then I thought, you know, I'd go up, test this, and then it would go down. It's kind of what I was thinking. But in any case, um, I, I jumped in, I, I bought the bid and got in the trade. And then I, I just, I saw this um, resistance level at the top of these candles. And so as it was approaching, I saw that it was kind of feeling like it was a little bit of resistance. So I just took my trade off there. I got 18 ticks and uh, on one contract that was on the evaluation 37, which is the account that I meant to trade up here. And, um, and then by this time, um, you know, I measured this leg up and was looking for a second leg after the breakout here. I, I didn't see a, a way to get into this trade. I wasn't really sure that we were going to break back up in. Um, it was like a failed breakout to the bottom. It's kind of what the market's been doing today is like trapping shorts and going longer in the other way as well, just trapping. So um, got a perfect measured move here. And then uh, this trade, my last trade, trade three, um, this trade was on the back of a, a news event. There was this uh, 10 o'clock, 30-year bond auction. I, I've never really traded them. Um, didn't really know what to expect. Wasn't very prepared. It seemed like it was happening a little bit earlier than expected. Uh, it confuses me because it says 10 col colon, uh, colon 1. I don't know if that means 10.01 or 10.10, but it seems to always happen before 10.10. So I guess it's like 10.01. It's supposed to happen. Anyway, um, huge move down, big move up. And so I just figured, okay, if it, I kind of wanted to treat it like if it breaks out of the top of this, um, treat it like the open trade, how I'm looking at it, like outside of the bigger range. And uh, so I um, I got in the order, I bought the bid and um, you know, I was thinking it would retest the highs up here. But again, I saw there was like some resistance. It, it didn't feel like it was pushing the way I was expecting it to like just push real quick right away. And so I just decided to take my profit there at 15 ticks. Um, could have got a little bit more, obviously a little bit more here. I was happy when I saw this pullback that I was out of the trade. I wouldn't have wanted to endure this necessarily. Um, but there was still been another uh, opportunity to get out of the trade here even. So I felt like I played that well. And um, yeah, and then that, that was the end of my trading. I, I stopped trading right here at 10.30 um, where this ends here. So it um, looks like we finally did get the, uh, the new high that I was expecting off of the high over here. That's kind of what I was really expecting when I took this trade. Um, didn't happen until way later. And uh, yeah, I was happy with today's trading. Um, you know, I think this is, this is the potential of what I could be doing. I got to give myself some credit. Like I, I, I do understand price action. I've been trading um, futures for three years, even though I've only been trading NQ since 2024, the beginning of this year. Um, I can read the, the markets and I've never traded a one minute chart before. So uh, trading a one minute chart is really, you know, really new for me. And um, so I'm, I'm a little bit, you know, wanting to ease into it and, and just try it. And, you know, it's great because the opening trade is kind of been the reason why I opened the one minute chart now. And so now because I've been getting used to trading on the one minute for the open and if trade goes against me, figuring out how to work in, um, you know, additional scalps and add contracts to like work out of the trade um, has really helped me to like get used to the one minute chart. And now I'm doing this 
as well um, with my trading where I'm just scalping on my own with the one minute chart, kind of with the training wheels off of my BS system. It's not like a black and white objective system. It's it's uh, very much more subjective, but I'm still applying a lot of the same concepts um, to my trading on the one minute. And I, I like it so far. It's It's been pretty good. I, it's been enjoyable. I feel a little bit freer. Um, I don't have to be exactly one tick above or below a, a candle to get into a trade. And if it goes, then I miss it. I can't get in. And um, yeah, I'm just feeling like I, I can have a little bit more of an enjoyable experience trading this way. I'm not throwing BS out. I'm going to continue to trade it. It's just there's been no opportunities for it for me today or yesterday. And, um, you know, when there's no opportunities to trade one system, then I want to be versatile and dynamic of a, a kind of trader that I can trade other systems. And so that's what I'm working on, just trying to evolve and, and grow as a trader and be able to trade multiple kinds of ways. So um, now I've got the open trade, I've got the BS system trades, and now I'm going to have the one minute scalp trades as well. So I'm hoping that will um, give me more opportunities, more volume of trades, um, and uh, more opportunities to grow accounts and get to hopefully some payouts eventually. So having said all that, let's see here. Uh, yeah, three and zero today, and um, yeah, the orb works again. Like I said, sixteen to eighty nine percent. You know, the the only thing that sucks about this trade is when you get the two losses. That means blown up, blown up accounts. The way I'm trading it, and uh, really the the two accounts that blew up. I don't think I really had an opportunity to even get out and decide like, oh, I'll take a smaller loss. It was like you want to give it the room that. You know, like like Alpine today, you know, this thing went all the way against him, all the way down here, and then he was still able to end up getting out of the trade for a win when it came back up. And, you know, he lost four accounts, but four accounts uh, of Apex were still good, as well as his blow knocks were still good. And so that's why you don't want to just, you know, accept the loss a lot of times, because a lot of times this will happen and and you'll come out, you know, profitable on your accounts. Um, so... Uh, that's just the way it is, but yeah, sixteen and two. Um, just gotta accept it, move on. That's it. That's the risk you take for a really high win rate strategy. And um, you know, for anyone else out there that um, you know, do you have do you have a strategy that's ninety percent or better? Um, this one is is right at ninety percent, basically, um, just in eighteen trades, and we'll see where it goes. But um, you know, if you can say that you're gonna win nine or more trades out of ten. Um, or, you know, 18 or 19 or 20 trades out of 20, you know, are you going to want to put on the risk and be willing to blow up accounts to go on these kinds of streaks? Um, for me, the answer is yes, but for everyone else, you know, everybody has to find their own answer. Um, just in my own experience, you know, experiencing the two losses, the blown accounts, um, especially yesterday, uh, four accounts blown up, two evals and two PAs, like, the way that feels is not great. So I understand anyone that, that doesn't want to be in that position of blowing accounts on that trade. For me, I just find the value in it. And I think it's it's worthwhile to continue to trade it. Although it, it is ironic that yesterday, um, you know, if you took the, the opening trade away, um, I would have been 3-0 and uh, yesterday, and I would be 3-0 and today um, just scalping, you know, if you took the, the opening trade away. And if this... Uh, Sim trade was actually taken on my Apex account, um, so you know it's it's ironic that my scalping has actually been really good lately, um, and I picked up the loss in blue, blue accounts on the open trade, um, but I think it's worth it. I think in, in the long run it's worth it. I think it's another tool for me to uh, get get a really high consistency rate trade on every single day, and um, and I'm just gonna continue to work on it and make it make it my own, make it work for me the way it makes sense to me. And we'll see um, if I'm able to continue to have uh, more success with it. So uh, I think I've said it all here. I appreciate everyone that joins me in the live stream. Starts at 10 a.m. Eastern every day. Been going a little bit later than 12.30. Today I went to 1.30. But uh, you can come check me out any day. And uh, I'll be continuing to do the, uh, the orb, the opening trade, uh, before the stream and then start the stream after. And... Uh, what else can I say? I appreciate all the likes and subscribes and anyone using my code and uh, eight and one for the week. So tomorrow's Friday. Let's see if I can finish up strong and uh, 215 and 49 overall for the year, 81%. So let's see what happens tomorrow. Hopefully I'll be 17 and two with the, the Alp Orb 
And uh, let's see if I can uh, be over 90% for the week. That'd be great. And I, I'm really looking forward to continuing to work on my scalping on the one minute chart, uh, which is new for me. And then uh, hopefully there'll be some more opportunities on the BS charts as well. Um, all right. Having said all that, I think I've said it all. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, be back out tomorrow. Hope you had a good trading day. And let's uh, finish out the week strong. All right. I'm out of here.